Uh, today we will have a plein air exercise. Ми будемо зображати пейзаж. We will depict a landscape. Многоплановий. With multiple planes. We will have the forefront і дальній план. And the background. Наша задача научиться не тільки зображати предмети і изображать предметы и их форму, мы должны научиться изображать эти предметы в пространстве. Our main goal is to learn to depict not only objects and their form, but also objects in perspective, in the distance. То есть мы должны научиться передавать воздушную перспективу. So we need to learn aerial perspective. Для этого мы берем простое задание. Uh, in order to do this, we will take a simple exercise. Простое по формам. A simple in form. В, в этом задании простые формы. Uh, so we will be using very simple forms in this task. Но само по себе задание сложное, потому что мы uh, простые формы будем стараться передавать правильным тоном и правильным цветом в пространстве, то есть в воздушной среде. But the complexity will come from our effort to not only depict the simple object, but also use the correct tones and colors in perspective, in aerial perspective. Мы будем выполнять задания масляными красками. We will be using oil paints for this exercise. Но для этого нам нужно задумать работу, поэтому мы будем делать тональный эскиз. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to create the idea for our painting, and so we will be uh, creating a tonal sketch. После тонального эскиза, когда мы оформим силуэты в и вставим компонуем их в раму, разберем их тон, мы будем брать эти пятна в цвете. After we have found the right silhouettes and the right tones. We will start finding the colors. И наша задача взять эти цветовые пятна гармонично, в правильном тоне и в правильном цветовом оттенке. And our main task is to get these colors right and in the correct tone. И с помощью тона и цветового оттенка, цветового оттенка мы будем передавать пространство. Uh, both with the colors and the tones we will be communicating space. Пространство и воздух. Space and the air in our scene. Давайте начнем. So let's begin. So let's start with a sketch. Uh, we need to create the idea for our future work and define the format. Вертикальный, горизонтальный. Vertical or horizontal. Прямоугольный или квадратный. Rectangle or square. То есть пропорции будущей картины. So the proportions of the future painting. У нас прямоугольный формат, горизонтальное положение. Uh, this time we will use a rectangular format in the horizontal position. Мы будем изображать Полянку. We will depict a small field. На ней будут небольшие деревца. With small trees around. И за ними будет группа деревьев или какой-то лес. And behind the small trees uh, we will create a forest. У которого будет uh, тоже свой силуэт. That will have its own silhouette. И который будет отличаться и по тону, и по цвету от переднего, от деревьев, которые на переднем плане. And which will be different in both tone and color from the trees in the foreground. Сейчас мы компонуем. Вот часть а, картины мы... So let's start from the composition. Часть картины мы отдадим для uh, горизонтальной плоскости, для полянки, для поля. Uh, we will uh, leave one part of our painting for the small field. Это будет земля, полянка, трава. This will be the ground with the grass. Наверху будет небо. Up there we will have the sky. И здесь будет uh, массы деревьев в вертикальной плоскости. And here we will depict the masses of the trees 
on the vertical plane. Мы должны внимательно понаблюдать и внимательно посмотреть силуэты. We need to carefully observe the silhouettes of the spots. Мы должны постараться передать характер силуэта. We need to try and communicate the character of the silhouette. Here is a group of trees that come together into a specific form. This form has a specific silhouette which we need to find the character of. And we need to principally define uh, here is the ground and it will have the and then we decide on the color of the sky uh, on the sunny day and what color and tone we will use for the trees the trees in the background and in the foreground Все формы, которые мы будем изображать, это такие округлые формы кроны деревьев. All of the forms that we will be depicting, and those are the round forms of the crowns of the trees. То есть массы, массы. So the masses. Будут иметь, они освещены, они будут иметь свет и тень. Because they have light on them, they will have both the light side and the shadow side. And that's why we right away mark the light spot and the shadow spot. The shadows are dark. And the light is obviously light. But we have different lights. So we have light on the small field, we have light on the foreground trees and the background trees. And the tone and color of the sky. We need to observe carefully and decide what will be the lightest and what will be the darkest. And what difference uh, will be between uh, different mid-tones? 
we have a view of a sunlit field. So horizontal planes will be very light. So the sky will be dark compared to this field, so we can mark this right away. The stone. So, because the ground is getting so much light, we are going to put quite solid tone on the sky. So it will be bluish, uh, darker tone. And uh, the trees in the background will be even darker than the sky in tone. They have a specific clear silhouette. We need to find the character of the silhouette and we need to put it on the canvas. So on these trees there will be both light and shadow. So light a bit lighter and shadows a bit darker. And Let's define the silhouette a bit further on this side. And in this part we will make it a bit lighter. Here a bit darker. There needs to be a clear difference between shadow and light spots on the masses of the trees in the background. And now let's look at the foreground. The same kind of tree as in the background, but it's much closer to us. That means that all of the uh, colors and the tones will be brighter and more contrasted. Uh, let's restore the silhouette of the spot if we lost it a bit. So we also need to mark the light and shadow spots here. And the light spot will be lighter than the light spot of the background trees. And the shadow will be darker. But these tones will be more solid than those on the sky.
то есть цвета светлее, тени темнее, и контрасты этих силуэтов будут сильнее. So the lights will be lighter compared to the background, the shadow will be darker, and so we get a much stronger contrast. The spot of the light and the spot of the shadow. In the shadow spot, we have own shadow and cast shadow. Let's find the difference. Own shadow will be darker. And the, the cast shadow will be a bit different, it will be slightly lighter. Here we have another small tree in the foreground. So the light spot and the shadow spot. One more silhouette. So the light spot will be lighter than in the background because these trees are closer to us and they are getting more light. There's more contrast in the foreground. So we have stronger contrast closer to us and weaker contrast in the background. So uh, we also see a difference in the silhouettes, in the contrasts of the silhouettes. So in the foreground, the trees will have stronger contrast compared to their background, the silhouettes of the trees. And then in the background, the background trees will have less contrast to the background of the sky. And the farther the object, the softer the edge between the object and the background. Вот в этом силуэте пятна деревьев, леса, мы стараемся передать воздушную, стараемся передать пространство а не только между группой деревьев и деревьями на переднем плане, но и еще с самого направления вот этой массы. То есть, уходя в глубину, эта масса становится светлее и менее контрастна к окружающим. So besides this depicting the difference between the background trees and the foreground trees, we are also focusing on the aerial perspective. So you see the forest going uh, in the direction towards the right. So to the left, it will be more contrasted against the background. Uh, and to the right, the contrast will be softened and we will use lighter colors. Итак, мы сделали, uh, so now we have created the tonal sketch. 
We have found the composition. We have found the motive and we have found the composition. We have a diagonal composition this time. There's movement there. Uh, there is space. So. So uh, the objects, the forms, are located at different distances to the audience or to the painter. There is the foreground that has the most contrast. In the foreground, we depict very strong light and highly contrasted shadows. In the background, everything is calmer. It's different in tone compared to foreground. The colors and tones are more transparent, they're lighter. And the contrast between shadow and light on the silhouette of the form, uh, on the silhouette of the masses, they're weaker in the background. So here we have some dark, a bit lighter, even lighter. So first tone, the darkest, second tone, third, so the light on the background trees. Then the light on the foreground trees. Then we have the tone of the sky. And finally our small field, the grass on it. Each tone the lightest field it has a gradation so because this small field is also depicted in perspective, there will be tonal gradation from a closer viewpoint to the distance, to away from us, from left to right as well. Each spot has its gradation. So this is the lightest spot, the field. Uh, there are some gradations there in the sky as well. It will be slightly darker towards the right corner. And then as we go lower, the tone will be lighter. And up there it will be slightly darker. And even darker as we go towards the right. So there will also be nuances inside the light spot in the foreground. For instance, in this spot, so if we compare the spot of the main tree in the foreground to this small tree, 
we will see that the smaller tree will look darker. It will look dark against the light background. And the same light spot, if we look at this farther uh, tree, uh, it will look as light against dark background, but it's the same spot. So we take the same color spot, but we take it in relation to the background, and so it will look a bit darker or a bit lighter depending on the context. We will also see gradation in the background forest. So the farther we go, the more transparent, lighter colors we use, and it will go more towards blue, towards cool uh, colors. So that will happen to each uh, tonal spot that we have found. So each color spot has a uh, gradation inside, nuances. Uh, so it has uh, nuances or it has contrast against the background compared to the background. So we have completed this exercise where you can see quite simple forms, simple silhouettes, but uh, our main goal is to learn more about aerial perspective. И будем учиться пробовать брать цветовые отношения. Цветовые отношения, цветовые... Передавать цветом состояние, освещение. So we will also be learning about color relationships and how to use color to communicate the condition of nature. Состояние природы the natural condition of the scene. должно быть ощущение передаваться цветом утро, вечер, день, какое состояние, какой момент. So with our colors we need to communicate uh, what state of nature we are observing. Is it morning? Is it evening? Is it noon? Is it a sunny day or a gray day? What kind of lighting do we have? And how all of that looks in perspective? So in space. So now we will start working on the canvas. Мы решили тональные задачи. We have already solved our tonal uh, problems, so we have found the tonal solution for this sketch. Композиционные. Uh, compositional problems as well. Uh, рисунок, силуэты нашли. We have found the silhouettes in our drawing. Массы нашли, пятен. The masses of the spots. Количество. So the quantities. То есть композицию. So we have defined the composition. И дальше переходим к цветовым отношениям. And then we move on to color relationships. So first we will take the color that matches the shadows in our painting.
So the first touches we make very light. We, we don't take a lot of paint, almost working with water. So uh, we make it very liquid. Uh, of course, we are not using actual water. We are using a special medium. So the uh, triple mix. So we transfer the character of the silhouettes, the masses. So we transfer the silhouettes, the masses from our earlier drawing. We define the position of the objects of the masses in space. So uh, we have the frontmost objects and then some that are farther. And here's the background. So we define how much of the dark mass of the background trees we will place on the canvas and how much of the lighter mass of the sky. Take a bit more here. We try to grasp the right tones right away. So, for example, in the foreground where we have the most contrast, we mark the shadows quite dark right away, and in the background a bit lighter. And now let's focus on the color relationships of the spot. Spots. So we'll find the color and tone for this spot in the background. In relation to that spot, we will find the right color and tone for the sky and for the ground. And then we will further strengthen the color and the tone of the uh, objects closest to us. And uh, we will make it even brighter relative to the other spots. Let's try the paints. Yeah, 
So we are making the background cooler and lighter, so we use more light green, which will be colder. Пишем пятнышко таким образом, чтобы внутри него была растяжка тональная, цветовая, слева направо, то есть от нас в глубину. Uh, we paint this background spot in a way that we stretch the tone, so uh, as it goes further towards uh, the right and into perspective, uh, the colors become more transparent. Сейчас к этому цветовому пятну мы должны взять небо и землю. And now, uh, relative to this color spot, we need to find the color for the sky and the ground. So when we are depicting a hot sunny day, like in this case, the ground will be uh, emitting quite some heat. Uh, and reflecting it back to the sky, so we will try to make the sky a bit pinkish. So uh, we try to make this color spot of the sky uh, harmonious relative to the 
uh, mass of the trees that we have just painted. And we need to stretch the tone to show the perspective. So uh, towards the bottom and on the left, we will have the lighter tone, uh, whereas uh, closer to the right side, we will have the darkest tone of the sky. With quite a soft edge. Let's add a bit of English red. To add a pinkish hue to the sky. And towards the bottom, here on the left, it will be warmer. So we will we'll add light to this color spot at the bottom here. it a bit warmer, a bit more sun.
Это земли, тьма солнечная, полянка, которая освещена солнцем. And now to the color and tone of the ground. Here we have a small field full of sunlight. So we need to harmoniously find three color spots. The sky, the ground, and the trees in the background.
So the foreground will be brighter, more saturated colors. And then as it goes in perspective, it becomes a bit calmer. Let's take a different shade. And now we will find the tone and color for the masses in the foreground.
Here we take a bit of cool shade in the shadow and in the light warm. There will be some reflected light in the shadows. Warmish reflects in the shadows. So the shadow itself will be cool, but some of the reflected light will be warm. So now we will define each spot. We will model, we will sculpt the spots. So we will paint it further. So we will add to the mass with more shades. So, for example, uh, the group of trees in the background. Uh, this is a mass, and some of it is uh, in the light, and some in the shadow. So uh, the parts of it that are in the light will be warmer and in the shadow cooler.
So we use the cool colors in the shadows and warm in the light, and then we tune the relationship between them. So how much warmer the light will be compared to the shadow, and then we make sure the gradation is in place as it goes in perspective away from us in the distance. Now we are working on the foreground. So we will add volume and more contrast and we will uh, create a more pastose a heavy layer in the foreground so that it really stands out against the background.
темные мы используем синие, гамму синих и гамму желтых цветов. И смешиваем их в различных пропорциях, чтобы получить нужный оттенок. Но где-то бывают очень открытые, насыщенные цвета. Там мы можем использовать напрямую на зеленый, зеленый цвет. So usually to create the green color, uh, we use a combination of blue and yellow. But in some cases, if you want to make it particularly bright, you can use directly a shade of green on another green. So I guess the background of another green. So in the foreground, we want to make the light, light spots particularly bright, and uh, we use a harsher, uh, larger brush for it, uh, so that we show the oscillation, the vibration of the leaves. And um, we lay more active brush strokes there, more expressive. So we can communicate the volume and the form of this mass by laying the brush strokes in specific direction.
растений, пишем тоньше, прозрачнее. Красочки накладываем не по стороне. We use a more transparent layer in the shadows, not as fast as we can be like. So we are finishing our painting. Накладываем последний выразит для маски, чтобы передать движение, направление маск, чтобы передать уход в пространство, эту горку, диагональные какие-то мазочки можно вести. We are laying some last expressive brushes that will communicate the movement, the direction. Add the volume. So we have created a plein air sketch. We have tried to create aerial perspective through use of color and tone. We have communicated the state of nature, a sunny day, 
lighting. So much. Turn the light. Дальше а, используем эти правила передачи пространства с помощью теплохолодности и тональности. Мы можем пробовать более сложные мотивы, более сложные силуэты. We can move on to more complex motifs and silhouettes now that we know how to communicate with tone and cool and warm colors, the aerial perspective. And the last brush stroke always goes on the sky to increase the lighting. Okay, that's it. We are finished.